All right, we're going to look at the muscles that are responsible for radiocarpal or wrist extension. Again, it occurs in the sagittal plane about the medial lateral axis. So let's look at this mo movement. Based on line of pull, it will be muscles posterior to the wrist joint uh, that create this extension. Extension is kind of putting your dorsal um, part of your hand to the posterior side. So here you can see, I'll stop it here, you can see it's all the posterior muscles um, posterior to that uh, wrist joint that are wrist extensors. All right, looking at these muscles in detail, there are a lot of them, but again, we need to make it as easy as possible. The first thing is that all of the muscles are of the posterior arm and forearm are radial nerve innervation. So looking at the superficial layer from medial to lateral, so from the ulnar side to the radial side, you have your extensor carpi ulnaris. It is very close to the flexor carpi ulnaris because we're 3D. We have our extensor digitorum, um, there's only one digitorum muscle on the posterior side, and it attaches to the distal phalanges, so it can extend all those phalanges. Then we have the extensor carpi radialis brevis and the extensor carpi radialis longus. The longus is longer because its attachment scooches up on um, the supracondral ridge of the humerus, and the brevis, like all wrist extensors come off the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, which is another um, easy way to remember the attachments for these muscles. Middle layer, we have the extensor digiti minimi. Sometimes you may read it as the extensor digiti quinti. Quinti just means five, right? It's your fifth digit, um, and it is the extensor muscle. So it's deep to the extensor carpi ulnaris, since it's on the pinky side, and it extends the fifth digit, but also contributes to wrist extension. Then we have the deep layer. It's deep to the extensor digitorum. Um, so from medial to lateral, you have your extensor indices, which is your index finger. Then you have your extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, and AB ductor pollicis longus. Our thumb has a lot of muscles because it can do a lot of things and it has a very large range of motion. Some helpful hints when you're tackling these muscles. Most wrist extensors attach to the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. All muscles are innervated by the radial nerve. So when you're approaching this, make things as simple as possible and that kind of eliminates having to memorize a nerve innervation um, and at least one of the attachment points. Other pictures of these muscles that are on the posterior forearm, since they're posterior, they are wrist extensors. Remember, wrist extension occurs in the sagittal plane about the medial lateral axis. And again, most are going to be called either radialis or ulnaris. So they're all coming off the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. And so then think about where the radialis might be. So radialis is going to be um, near the second and third metacarpals, right? Closer to the thumb side. So we have the extensor carpi radialis brevis, um, a wrist extensor, radial nerve innervation. We have then extensor carpi radialis longus, um, which goes to the second metacarpal. Again, radial nerve innervation and a wrist extensor. Then we have extensor carpi ulnaris, which goes to the base of the fifth metacarpal from the lateral epicondyle. Again, I would just remember lateral epicondyle for all of them. And again, radial nerve for all of them. Then we have the extensor digitorum. Uh, 
again, coming off the lateral epicondyle. And this goes to the distal um, phalange of the uh, digits. So, because it is, we only have one extensor digitorum muscle. The middle layer is the extensor digiti minimi. Again, you may see it in books as the extensor digiti quinti um, because it, it extends your pinky. Um, so it's radial nerve and it's extension of the little finger. Again, since it's posterior on the wrist joint, it can help with wrist extension. The, the deeper ones do less with wrist extension, but I'm gonna review them all here. Then we have extensor indices, which is the deep layer, and that is extending your index finger. So it's going to the um, uh, phalange of the index finger, it's radial nerve innervation, and it extends the index finger. Then we have the pollicis or the thumb muscles. We have extensor pollicis longus, which goes to the distal phalanx of the thumb, extensor pollicis brevis, which goes to the proximal phalange of the thumb, and then abductor pollicis longus, um, which goes to the base of the metacarpal of the thumb.